3.5, I do have a public comment, so we'll take that and then we'll let Tom speak. Um, and I have Monty, Monty Goddard. Uh, good evening. I want to say this right off the bat. I don't have enough time to make my complete comment, but I do want to say the comments that I'm making tonight are in, not intended to sway your approval of tonight's pay raise for our city manager. They're to share my concern with the largesse of our past city council contract negotiators who seem to have been oblivious to Wildemar's pitiful budget. Assuming tonight's pay raise will be approved during the four-year life of this contract amendment, 2017 through 2020, our city manager will have received annual pay raises of 6.7, 5.24, 4.48, and 4.29%. During this same period, federal retiree Social Security recipients and many others have received raises or adjustments of 0 0.3, 2.0, 2.8, 2 and 1.6 based on the Consumer Price Index. This contract had provided 84000 above and beyond what CPI-based raises would have. I did a little benchmarking with our neighboring cities. I also looked at the other two Riverside County cities, which incorporated coincident with Wildemar and Menifee. And Menifee. I recently read Wildemar's 2018 tax revenue per resident ranked at just 15 places from last place, or 466 out of California's 481 cities. Yet based on the California Comptroller's 2018 data, Wildemar came in third out of the 70, excuse me, out of the seven in city manager total compensation in my benchmarking exercise. Temecula was number one at 373,000, Marietta number two at 332, Wildemar chimed in at number three at 315, Menifee is 283, Lake Elsinore 267, Harupa Valley 192, East Vale 151. Temecula and Marietta were no surprise since according to ClearGov's 2018 report, they also ranked one and two out of the seven cities I benchmarked in total tax revenue at 103 million and 55 million. This is 10.3 and 5.5 times Wildemar's pitiful 10 million in total tax revenue. I was surprised at the other four cities with tax revenue of 43 million for Menifee, 31 million for Rupert Valley, 26 million for Lake Elsinore, 25 million for Eastvale, range from 4.3 to 2.5 times Wildemar's tax revenue, yet they all compensate their city manager less, some significantly less. Another concerning aspect in this current contract amendment was the doubling of the cash buyout on unused sick leave on exiting city services from 50% to 100%. This will be a significant number in the future as the contract now provides unlimited accrual among all categories, 50.5 days of 100% of cashable leave to be earned each year. Please keep my comments in mind when you begin future contract negotiations. I highly recommend you attend a Chester L. Karras effective negotiating workshop. I have attended both that are offered, and I believe the cost would be an excellent Thank you, Marty. investment for Wildemar. Thank you. I have no other um, public comments, Council. Um. Let's Tom. Tom yeah. Let's Tom go first. Okay. Sorry. Just a brief report, Mayor and Council. The item before you is a resolution to approve an increase in the city manager's salary. The third amendment to the city manager's contract states that the council may, in open session of a council meeting, increase the city manager's salary. And it states, subject to a satisfactory performance review and the approval of the city council in open session of a city council meeting. City manager's annual base salary may be increased to 219000 effective January 1st, 2020. Therefore, this item for your review and discussion is uh, to increase the city manager's salary for 2020 to $219,000 through the approval of the resolution. And that concludes the report. Questions, anyone? I have, I have just a couple comments to address. Okay. Uh, kind of, I want to at least attempt to address kind of what you said money a little bit um at least some of my thinking uh, prior to the because i was part of the contract negotiation i'm one of the uh you know solid negotiators um <laughs> i recognize uh or we recognize the you know the subcommittee when we brought it to the council that uh gary had been with us for at the time i don't know seven eight years 
uh, without getting any kind of raise, any kind of adjustment and COLA, nothing. Okay. So part of it was making up for, in my, in my eyes, doing what was right. Uh, he could have gone other places and he had opportunities too. Uh, I appreciated the, the loyalty to the, to our city. Um, that was a, a big part of the thinking. And, uh, in reality, and I, Joseph and I discussed this earlier, uh, and I've said this, you know, probably every year, uh, I know the salary, it, it seems like a lot. It is, it's a, you know, it's a good, you know, chunk of change, but, uh, that's the reality of that position. So I would err on the side of, uh, paying for quality over, you know, underpaying somebody and getting crap. So, uh, with that in mind, I recognize the standards just across, kind of just across the region when you look at it. I mean, everybody makes a, a pretty healthy uh, uh, paycheck, and that's this the professionals that they are in the, in the industry they're in. Uh, if I could do things differently, I might go back and get my MPA and start down that path. But uh, the alternative in my eyes is um, lowering, lowering our standards and not paying the, you know, what some would consider to be a premium and seeing the effects of that and the results of, of that. So in my day job, I am forced to pay a premium for SharePoint developers. I need really smart people and they know what they're worth. And uh, I would imagine that we would be paying a, the same, if not significantly more, if uh, he was to quit and walk out the door today and we you know to get somebody else on, you know, on the same level. So I rather I'm a, a person that thinks that I'd rather have the right person in the right seat than just put somebody in the seat and let it see how it rides. So, uh, Gary, I, I think you do a great job. I mean, there's things to talk about still, but I think you do a great job. So, yeah. Yeah, I just want to say to you, I know when you hear the salary, you know, you, hear, you think that's a lot of money, and it is. Um, as Dustin was saying, that... Um, it is that's what that position is so you know everyone makes different salaries and that's the position that pays that but what i want to also remember is because maybe i don't know if you were on the council then and joseph wasn't uh for many years we didn't have james riley and so adding, yeah. and gary was wearing two hats and he was doing two jobs he was our finance director and he was our city manager mm -hmm. and he didn't receive a raise um, when the governor stole our money for all those years, um, no one got raises, and we have actually very little turnover. So um, our, we're very blessed to have all the good stuff that we have, and they believe in Wildemar, and they stay, even though they weren't receiving raises. And so Gary, for many years, did two jobs and didn't receive a raise at all for many years. So they were doing I the right appreciate thing. it. Yeah. yeah. So. Else? All right, I've, <clears throat> I've prepared some comments on this topic, which includes my general philosophy on public employee, employee pay in Wildemar and goes a bit deeper than the narrow focus of tonight's agenda item. So let me start by saying that we have a great staff led by a solid and steady city manager. Uh, they are all very professional, good at what they do, and a pleasure to work with. They are also well compensated, both in actual salary and again in benefits. <clears throat> Now, when I have to tell a resident that their road can't be fixed because we have no money or any other need that has to be tabled, which unfortunately there are many, I have to pause at that. Remember all those years of hanging on by our fingertips? With just a quick drive around the city, one can see that it needs a lot of TLC just to get back up to the baseline. And with that actuality, I can't justify a yearly, a yearly raise of $9,000, which is on top of last year's $9,000 increase and a similar increase the year before that to our city manager. Are those figures small potatoes? Is that being penny wise and pound foolish? Or is that the reality on the ground in a small budget city like Wildemar? Now one risk in not approving yearly raises is the real possibility of turnover. Do we want turnover in key positions in our city? Of course not. Um, should we offer generous compensation packages in order to prevent or stave off turnover? Sure, but I already think that we do offer generous salaries and compensation packages. However, being that we are a small budget city akin to a small market sports teams, um, we have to accept the reality that we can't compete with large budget cities 
large market teams, if you will. Uh, not on this footing, anyway. We must understand that, like with other small budget operations, we may very well work as a farm system, a pipeline for larger budget operations, where talented individuals come to Wildemar, put in several years here, hone their craft, and, unfortunately for us, opt to sign elsewhere, as a free agent, so to speak, where more money and more impressive benefits can be freely offered. Is that ideal? Of course not, but it is Wildemar. We have a slower pace of life here and a smaller budget. That's the same thing I remind the residents when they press me about an issue that we seem unable to address. I tell them, you chose Wildemar as your home, knowing what Wildemar was like, that we aren't a big city, we can't provide what bigger cities can provide. That's part and parcel of being in a smaller city with a slower pace of life and a small budget. If that applies to residents that live and pay taxes here, it is completely fair to say that the same applies to our staff, no matter how much we personally like them and love the job they've been doing. And I personally like you guys, and I love the jobs you've been doing. Now, to re retain staff, we have to rely on things beyond remuneration, the intangibles. The fact that we aren't a big city with big city problems and the big city demands and pressures. Our slower pace of life is appealing to many. Now, to conclude, let me go with the baseball analogy you've all been anticipating for me, or dreading. It starts with the name of Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn. He opted to stay in his hometown, leaving a ton of potential money on the table to remain in a market that was almost never going to compete for a championship. But it was his home, so the choice was easy for him. And what he didn't get on his paycheck, he made up for in quality of life, respect, and adoration. On the other hand, there's Bryce Harper, a longtime Washington national star. After many years in that organization, he chose to go free agent and sign with a cross-division rival for a record-breaking contract. What happened the following season? The team he went to, after investing all that money, broke even with a 500 record. The team he left, they won the World Series. Mm -hmm. Wildemar is looking for the Tony Gwynns out there while understanding we can't meet the ambitions of the Bryce Harpers and hold no grudges when they opt to leave for greener pastures. That's my philosophy on the subject. I love Gary, but uh, I can't justify the raise, so I'm not in favor of it. Okay. Anybody else? I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, item 3.5. Three three oh. No. Yes. Where am I at? Yes. Three president. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Motion carries 4 1 with. Councilmember Morabito voting no.